Welcome back to a big unboxing. If you watched my channel for a while, you probably know that I really like stuff from Proxon. And I bought a lot of machines and tools from them, uh, preferably used over the years. And most of the time they turned out really nice, uh, with one big exception, a uh, card here, link in the description. Anyway, uh, I wasn't able to get my hands on a used one of these, so uh, I had to cash out quite a lot of cash to buy one new. And we will unbox it now. Enjoy! I'm talking here about a Proxon a Precision Lathe PD250-E. And yeah, there is a description in English on the back side of the box. So uh, we will have a closer look at that. But yeah, it's, it's a lathe, a mini, mini lathe. And uh, forget uh, for the moment about uh, the precision part. That's mostly marketing. It's, it's a good enough micro lathe. On the other side of the box we have, fortunately, an English description. So yeah, a precision lathe PD 250-E, center distance 250 millimeters. Yeah, I mentioned it's a micro lathe. Uh, swing, yeah, 70 millimeters, spindle speeds between 100 and 3000, rotations per minute, uh, yeah, complete with headstock, chuck, uh, yeah, that's good. Uh, life center, yeah, I didn't know that actually about life center, that's a nice touch, and thread cutting system. So, yeah, uh, you can cut threads with it. Uh, yeah, and most importantly, made in Germany, not produced somewhere in Asia and then sold here under the, uh, sorry, can't read that, uh, Proxon brand. Nothing new here on the small side of the box, just again the picture and the description in different languages. We already read that. So let's cut that thing open here. Uh oh, <laughs> I cut the safety regulations, uh, safety regulations. <laughs> okay. Oh, that looks actually quite nice. Uh, so <clears throat> the most paper here is about the Proxon catalog. And I never got a Proxon catalog before. Huh? Nice. And then we have here the manual, which is uh, yeah, quite thick. But it's also in uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 different languages. So, yeah, but there are detailed drawings in it. Not so bad. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll have a closer look at that uh, for sure. Okay, now let's see what's inside the cake. And yeah, that looks nice. I guess I will have to find another angle. Let's see what we have here. So, uh, yeah, a uh, security thingy with a whole lot of screws. I don't think these are the screws for the security screw, uh, thingy. I think these are the screws for uh, the chuck. Uh, we will <laughs> unpack that. Separately, uh, the key for the chuck, okay. And then we have, ah, 
the life center yeah it's turning life center i i really i really didn't expect a life center on such a small lathe um no idea again even less of an idea oh yeah um yeah that's the uh sorry the three I don't know the English name right now. Uh, here for <coughs> our very central piece for the chuck. Anything else back here? No. Then we have, okay, a belt and some plastic parts. Oh, there's more in here. Uh, these look like shims. Yeah shim blade set uh i don't know why uh, why we would need shims but uh, okay that's it on this side and here we have <clears throat> allen keys a whole set yeah very nice with the uh, mm. and the gears which are uh i want to point that out all metal no plastic okay and uh, then we have the lathe itself uh -um. okay uh, this will get a little bit tricky because I guess that's weighting about 10 kilograms Okay, come on. Don't put it down on the cable. Uh, anything else in here? No, that's empty. So, uh, here it is. Uh, yeah, let me uh, just get off the styrofoam here and uh, then we put everything together i guess uh, according to the uh, <clears throat> manual of course and here it is in all its glory on oh, there's still some styrofoam here uh yeah i guess we <laughs> need to assemble it now and we'll start with the chuck here Oh, there are already three draws in here so I guess oh yeah these are the inverted draws if you want to uh, yeah apply the force to some hollow tubing uh, from the inside um, yeah here's the chuck and it has three holes and I Let's read the paper. VCI, uh, uh, I have to zoom, uh, zoom down because uh, <clears throat> this is very telling here. I thought this <laughs> is some wrapping from the actual manufacturer of the chuck, but it's not. It's uh, just the printing from the manufacturer of this oily wrapping paper and it's armor wrap from uh, VCI nanotechnology, yeah, armor protective packaging, corrosion inhibiting paper for the protection of ferrous metals, non-toxic, clean, safe and easy rust prevention from Howell, uh, am I, is that Minnesota? I don't know, United States of America, www armorvci.com. <laughs> for your uh, uh, my American viewers, I guess. Anyway, here's the chuck and uh, yeah, with three holes and I also have 
three screws here. These are the only three screws that might fit here. So I guess uh, we skip the uh, read user manual and uh, just attach the chuck. Huh? Of course, we will be using the three supplied screws and I just turn the screw hole here to the top and Okay, so uh, these uh, the uh, fitting on the chuck on the shaft is of course a very tight fit, and I'm just attaching the screws all hand tight or finger tight, and then I'm using the screws to, yeah, to push the chuck slowly but surely onto the shaft. Okay, I think we're done with finger tight. Okay, that's it. And here we have a security key, <laughs> as the security is a spring here for the chuck. So, uh -uh. yeah, uh, on most keys for trucks, uh, that security spring that should prevent you from keeping the key here when you switch on the lathe uh, is gone quite fast because it's inconvenient and I have to admit in my lifetime I actually <laughs> used a lathe to uh, accelerate <laughs> such a key to an enormous speed and uh, yeah uh, I missed everybody in the room okay so everybody was fine but uh, that you do that once and afterwards uh, you th think about taking the key out before switching on the lathe. And now for the rotating life center. That's just, uh, I think, MK1 or MK2 here at the end. So we just have to... Ah. Okay, now. Now it's sitting. Okay, but it, it's really easy to remove, uh, yeah, uh, because you just uh, turn to the back and then it comes out. That's a nice feature. But you have, of course, to think about it when you put it in. That if you turn too far back, uh, you just push it out. Uh, you don't want to do it uh, if you have really some load on here. <clears throat> then we have that security contraption here. I will put it on, but I guess uh, at some point it will go. Um, because uh, that's also something that you should do, but it's not very convenient. And I need to find the uh, mounting stuff for that thing. Here it is. Uh, it was in the bag with the belt and uh, this thing I <laughs> totally forgot about. But yeah, that should just go in here with the washer. And we're done. And yeah, I don't like these contraptions, but <clears throat> security. Anyway, I forgot about that thing here. That's one of the handle for the hand wheels. And uh, please note, these handles are all metal and the wheels are all metal, okay? Not uh, any plastic so far. Uh, but for the housing. So I guess they 
didn't attach that here so the whole thing will be uh, <laughs> an inch <laughs> Two and a half centimeters shorter uh, in the box. So that's obviously uh, okay. That's locked. That's free. Okay. That's obviously moving your tool post here around. And now it's time to <coughs> put in. <laughs> all the cock wheels and uh, maybe the belt we will see so there's a screw here and then you can oh yeah it's hinged you can open that and oh well everything seems to be already set up inside here and yeah uh, just a brief overview so with that belt uh, putting on different diameters here on these two uh, wheels, you control the RPM range of the spindle itself. And then with these three wheels, you control the speed of the, uh, yeah, um, the, the other spindle that moves the tool post. Uh, for yeah, uh, cutting uh, at different speeds and uh, threading stuff uh, with a uh, different thread width and so on. And you got a lot of uh, metal wheels. I already <laughs> mentioned that metal wheels and also here another belt to do the adjustments. And inside you have also a table that's on some metallic... Uh, foil glued in here printed on so it, it's a bit reflective but i guess uh, it will survive for quite some time with the uh different wheels you have to use uh, cock wheels you have to use for uh the different threads here it's all metric it's all metric and for uh yeah the speed your tool post is advancing here so as far as i can see either 0.1 millimeters or 0.05 millimeters uh per rotation i don't know but we have more information uh <clears throat> in the manual and here on the outside uh, you have even more tables here and information about all the settings and uh, the speed ranges and so on but you find these tables also inside the manual in uh, different languages and i think there is even yeah <laughs> a formula here for the uh, maximum cutting speed uh, that is taking the maximum cutting speed you can uh, do with a certain material with that machine and then calculating the max rpms from it oh yeah and the thing has a little uh through hole here uh, nothing to write home about, so about uh, 10.5 millimeters. So, but yeah, it's, it's there, it's there. Just a quick look at the reverse jaws here for the chuck that are provided. Uh, yeah, just in case you have something hollow that you want to chuck in. Um, and the shims here uh, set between 0.1 and 2 millimeters here so six shims in total that's of course provided uh, for leveling that thing when you screw it uh, to some surface a workbench or whatever you can of course rotate here the top of the tool post so uh, yeah, <clears throat> you can cut at an angle, uh, but the nice detail here is that the scale is also made from metal. It's not glued on, it's made from metal. And yeah, it looks good so far. We will see how it actually works, but uh, so far it looks really good. Moving the tailstock seems to be a single screw affair here. It's not really accessible from the top, kind of, but uh, at an angle. 
Um, but you, oh, this is going very nicely. And did I mention that all the wigs are already oiled? So I put the two post at the backmost position and then we lock that up again. And yeah, this, this is a little bit... Yeah. Would have been nice to have a little lever here or something. Okay, and we also put that back to zero degrees and that's it. If I go further back, I <laughs> push out here my life center. And what I want to do next is measure how much space you actually have between the life center and the chuck. And that's, well, 20 centimeters about-ish. Um, yeah, and uh, between the chuck <laughs> and the tailstock here, you have the 25 centimeters or 250 millimeters. But if you put something in here and you use the tailstock, it's really just, yeah, okay. This goes a little bit into your piece you're working in, but uh, yeah, let's say a little over 20 centimeters, realistically. The ways are all or seem to be all adjusted from the factory quite well. So I there's absolutely no play here in the tool post. And the backlash here is about -ish, yeah, 0.1 millimeter on that wheel, and on this wheel it's also about uh, maybe 0.15 millimeters. So yeah, there you could do some adjustment if you feel the need. But uh, yeah, they're running really tight. Oh, almost a little bit, yeah, too much force here, but uh, that's better than uh, not enough force. And uh, here the whole tool assembly, yeah, also uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.15 millimeters backlash. Not too bad out of the box, I guess. I would have loved to show you first chips here in this video, but unfortunately, uh, while I have some aluminum round stock here, <laughs> I yet have to receive the tools. I have no cutting tools. Uh, but anyway, let's switch that thing on. Oh, green LED. And uh, let's turn it. Oh, nice and quiet uh, at the lowest electronic setting. So that's nice. And uh, the other way around. Yeah, that's uh, actually uh, turning right. That was uh, before was turning left. There are markers here. Really quiet and not much vibration either. Oh. And then we should be able To switch on the uh, the other spindle, uh, it has a special name. Uh, <clears throat> Attention! Oh, and it's turning slowly but surely, and it's turning in the right direction. No, it's turning in this direction. So. This one, yeah. Now we're cutting in this direction. Very nice. Very nice. I like it. 
I won't show you an Amazon or eBay listing for that thing uh, because at least here in Germany if I would have bought that via eBay I would have cashed out more. Uh, in the end I ordered that from a relatively reputable online shop called Feldner which is a subsidiary of uh, Conrad Electronics uh, which is quite reputable here in uh, Europe. Oh, relatively reputable. It's an okay online shop and they used to have also stores here in Germany but they closed down most of them. Um, anyway, I cashed out for that thing buying directly by an, uh, by an online dealer a little less than 950 euros. So that thing is definitely not cheap. Uh, but <laughs> uh, compared to it, uh, a little bit larger, so yeah, 350 millimeters or so, uh, Chinese counterparts, it comes out of the box looking very nice and it seems to be uh, <clears throat> usable right away. Um, and nothing, there's nothing cheap here. Yeah, the handles are all metal. Uh, the scale here is all metal. The scales here on the ha handle, they are, they are not, they are, oh yeah, this is uh, even recessed and then somehow colored plastic here, the scales. So nothing, nothing looks or feels cheap about it. Uh, Hence the price, I guess, and plus <laughs> made in Germany. Anyway, the only grief, I have always griefs with things, you know me. The only grief I have is uh, at that price, they could have included at least, you know, one, one uh, cutting tool here for the tool post. So you could start right away. Uh, cutting some stuff. But uh, I will have to defer that to another unboxing video where uh, if the things arrive uh, I will show you some accessories here that uh, at least I found uh, essential for having when you are having a little micro lathe. Uh, till then, bye!